So today I'm gonna be giving you four pro tips when using the DJI Ronin S. Hey, I'm Luke with Wedding Film Coach. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel. Wedding Film Coach is all about helping people get started with video. And so uh, specifically, if you're interested in wedding filmmaking, then what I want you to do is check out the link in the description below. That's gonna take you to my website where you can get a free ebook that's gonna help you get started with wedding filmmaking, whether it's shooting your first wedding film or starting to build your wedding filmmaking business. It's gonna have a lot of good tips on there for you that's gonna help you get started. It's not exhaustive, but it's some great material that will help you uh, avoid a lot of the mistakes that we all have made when getting started with this. So I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions. For now, let's get started with this video. This is four pro tips when using the DJI Ronin S. So here we go. Uh, first pro tip is during the balancing uh, of your camera and your gimbal, uh, there's a lot of different levers and, and things you have to twist and tighten and loosen. Uh, one of the best pro tips I can give you is actually uh, when, uh, when tightening up the 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 base plate on the gimbal and so whenever you're putting uh, the camera on for the first time you put it on pass that little safety pin and then the first thing you do is lock your base plate in and obviously you want to try to balance that first one of the things i've noticed is if you have it completely unlocked when you're trying to balance it it slides a lot and like if you don't have it just right it's going to slide out of place and you got to figure it out and so what i do is i slide this lever to lock it just up until the point where it's flush with this piece sticking out here uh, where, your, where your cords go in. So not all the way to lock, but, but un, put it right there to where it meets that and it's still loose enough where you can slide it around, but it's also tight enough to where it's not gonna go flying off if, uh, if you don't have it just right. And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and balance this back to where it was. You see it's not sliding, it's kind of, kind of still uh, in there in place. And this is a huge lens from another video I just did. If you're, if you're wondering if you can balance a very big lens on the DJI Ronin S, then check out that video. And obviously it's balanced here, so you can. Uh, so anyway, that's pro tip number one. All right, the second pro tip when using the DJI Ronin S is really, again, in getting started with it and making sure you have it, uh, the battery grip um, locked in place to the actual gimbal mechanism. Now a lot of people see this and they want to push this lock like too far and a lot of people are breaking this locking mechanism and so whenever you get this in place just push it kind of firmly until it stops and then stop right there don't try to don't try to force it into place if you press it firmly enough just you know general thumb strength for most people unless you're like sylvester stallone and over the top um, it's going to lock that in place safely and just check it if it slides push it a little farther if it doesn't then it's locked you don't have to worry about it so that's pro tip number two pro tip number three is uh, when you're using the gimbal throughout the day Naturally, you don't want to have it on all the time for a whole 12 hour shoot or a whole uh, 24 hour shoot if you're going all day um, because you're going to want to change lenses, you're going to want to take a break, uh, you're going to want to set it down and, and, and think for a second uh, and not uh, constantly be holding it. And so when you do that, you don't have to turn the gimbal or the battery all the way off. Uh, you can turn the gimbal off here by pressing that twice and holding and the power button is on this other side here. And to turn it off, you uh, tap once and then hold to turn it off. But whenever you do that, once you turn it back on, it's gonna make that DJI ding. And if you're in a wedding situation where you, you don't wanna be making a lot of noise, you don't wanna be noticed, you want to kind of still be in the shadows, you know, a wallflower, uh, then you don't want any noise happening. And so what you can do is simply, uh, I'm gonna turn it on. Okay, so obviously my motors are on now. Uh, you can double tap that power button, one, two, and it's going to turn the motors off and no noise. And then you can simply double tap again to re-engage those motors. And so instead of turning it off completely, it's more of like a pause or a you know, disengage motors, uh, but that's not gonna have that ding whenever you turn it back on. So you can make, make sure that you're still filming quietly being in whatever kind of moment you need to be in. And it's also just quicker too. So that is pro tip number three. 
Okay, and pro tip number four, the last one, is actually that you don't necessarily have to rebalance each time you change the lens on your gimbal. Now, um, I have this humongous lens on here right now, this uh, Sigma 85 Arc 1.4, and uh, it's balanced and it's working great. Motors are on, it's doing wonderful. Uh, but let's say, I, I, and I don't have any other lenses out here with me, but let's say I put a lens on that wasn't quite as heavy as this, and so I needed to move my, I needed to balance my camera uh, forward even more. I can do that, and I don't necessarily have to rebalance my camera, or I don't have to rebalance the gimbal. So let me turn my motors off. Okay, they're off. And I'm just simply gonna slide this forward a little bit, okay? And so it's out of balance. You can see it's you know got a lot of weight on the front there. So if I were to put another lens on that uh, that kind of disproportioned it in that way, look what happens when I turn the motors back on. Okay, it's going to lock it right back in place, even though it's not 100% balanced. Um, and what I've found is the, that most of the lenses that I use personally, I do not have to rebalance this between. Uh, between changing those lenses. Now, this is gonna mean that your motors are going to be working harder and kind of working overtime uh, to maintain that balance. But if you're in a pinch or you're in a rush, then that's one less thing you don't have to do. And we all know as filmmakers, or if you're new to filmmaking, you'll figure this out, that three seconds can make a difference between getting a shot and losing a moment. Um, and every single moment counts. So if you feel like you are in a rush, but you want to change the lens real quick, but you don't want to have to change the balancing on your gimbal, then don't worry about it. This gimbal can handle it. And so let's try it the other way. Let's say, put it too far back. Again, it's balancing it just fine. Those motors are overcompensating or they're compensating for the, the lack of balance. And it's the same thing from side to side and tilt to tilt. Um, now, obviously it's not optimal, but again, the lenses that I use, it handles it just fine. Never had any micro jitters, never had any of the, the motors, you know, whirling at me, making that noise. Um, and so that's the fourth pro tip that you don't necessarily have to rebalance. I would say before you get out in the field and you kind of depend on this, Test it out with your lenses because your lenses are going to be different than mine. I usually use uh, the Sony Zeiss 24-70 f4, uh, the 10-18 APS-C lens f4, and then the 55mm 1.8 uh, Sony Zeiss. And all of those are small enough to where the differences in, in the proportions of weight are not huge enough to make a difference on this gimbal because the motors are so strong. And so uh, I hope that that works for you because I know it saves me a lot of time <clears throat> on a wedding day. And so let's go over these again. The first pro tip was the, uh, lock, was the locking mechanism up here. Whenever you're balancing it, press it just a little bit forward, not all the way unlocked, but just a little bit forward to where it meets your base plate coming out here. And that's gonna tighten it up enough to where you can still move it, but it's not gonna slide out of control. The second pro tip was the locking mechanism down here from the battery to the gimbal that just press it to where it's tight, check it, and it's good. Don't break that locking mechanism. A third, a mechan or the third pro tip was to double tap that power button so you don't have to turn it all the way off, just pause those, mo those, those motors, and then double tap it to turn it back on, and you're good to go. And fourth, obviously, was you don't have to rebalance between every lens change. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I, I hope that it's been helpful. Most of all, if you have any questions about any of that or you have any good pro tips that I didn't cover in this video, uh, put them in the comments below. Let's help each other out. I know a lot of people watching these videos uh, come here because they're helpful, because they're practical, and uh, they, don't, they don't get that content in a lot of the more entertaining YouTube channels. So uh, let's be helpful to each other. Let's encourage one another. And so that's all for this video right now. If you would, subscribe, hit that notification button if you like these videos, if they're helpful to you. And uh, again, if you're new at wedding filmmaking or just getting started, then check out that free ebook on my website, link in the description below. Have a great day. I'll see you all later.